Hello everybody and welcome back to Fatty Bull and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you today in real time how to use retracing with Unreal and the latest RTX um, and an HDRI backdrop and I go through all the details how to set up the backdrop how to change the backdrop how to make it like a 360 degree shot how to set up some basic uh, materials, how to do it with the cameras, how to render an animation. And of course, I go through all the project settings and the render settings uh, and the retracing settings to get actually this kind of result. And as always, you find all my scene files and all the goodies on my webpage for free to download uh, at fedible.com, of course. Uh, and yeah, I hope you will enjoy this new video tutorial and uh, that goes through all the details explaining and showing what you can do using the camera, depth of field shots, everything in real time, how to render shots like this out, how to set up the camera, how to attack also the refraction, the translucency, uh, you know, everything, all the details. Um, to actually really see how you can do that. So as you can see here, this is the final result. And if you watch me doing it live and you stay with me for the next 10 minutes, you will be able to do the same. So this is the first step. You want to make sure that DX12 is activated. Next, you go into settings, project settings. In the project settings, you need to first of all type in ray tracing. And then you can see here retracing, it's not on check it and it says do you want automatically enable also the skin cache now you say yes and then here on the bottom it says restart now so i'm going to restart here now and you can do the same so the next thing you want to check is that your windows system so you go here under the project settings again in the lower left you scroll down to windows and then this platform windows is popping up and you want to make sure that you have the default RHI set to DirectX 12. Okay, so this is very important. Then the next thing is GBuffer. So you type in GBuffer, okay, and this pops up and you can see here that the GBuffer format is set to default, but you want to set this to high precision normals. That helps you as well. Then for the reflections, type in reflections, you want to bump this up from 128 to 1024, okay? And you save it. So what I also do is I remove the preview render. So under the project settings, in the project settings tab, you click shadow. And you see here the preview shadow material indicator material is popping up. So you click on this little icon here and when you do that and you can close this you see that you can actually double click now the, uh, the material when you double click it the material editor pops up and you can clearly clearly see here the preview right and all you have to do is you right mouse click here and break the link and then you save it and then the preview mode from the shadow uh, or preview is gone okay so a very important um, feature you have to activate is actually the HDRI backdrop because when you look here on the lights, you will not see it. You have directional, point light, spotlights, rectangle, and skylight, but the HDRI backdrop isn't there. So what you have to do is you click on settings, plugins, and in the search bar, you type in HDRI backdrop. So you see it here. Make sure that this is checked. And once this is checked, you click restart now and it's restarting and you should be back with the HRI backdrop. So I'm going to start a new level because we want to start from scratch and start with an empty level. And what I do here is I drag and drop the HRI backdrop into the editor. And this is how it looks like and this is what you can see. In the next step, I'm going to show you how to import uh, a 3D model using Datasmith. So if you haven't been installing Datasmith, I created another video tutorial in which I show exactly how you install Datasmith and how you can also use it with other 3D software packages. 
So in this case, I'm going here and I create a new folder and I call it Datasmith. And uh, now I click on my Datasmith plugin and I go to my content in which I exported already my model. I select my folder Datasmith and say geometry and materials should be imported. I do not want to import any lights, cameras, animations uh, or anything else. And I also leave the static mesh options here by default at the default resolution. Just click import. So once the model is imported, you can see here in the unlit mode, this is how it looks like. And I will go through every single step to set this up correctly for you. So if you click on lit, you see it's underexposed. Datasmith imports it and also brings a global exposure control uh, into this um, scene file automatically. And I usually delete it. Okay, and I start from scratch and I also want to show you what's happening if you delete this. You see the auto exposure is automatically kicking in and then you see, whoa, my HDRI map is automatically illuminating already the scene file. But there is a little bit more to do. First of all, you can clearly see when I select the HDRI backdrop, you can also see here that, um, you know, it's on zero in the height but I can also change this and I can bring this down like uh, you know like a hundred centimeters or whatever so I can also drag and drop it of course inside of my viewport to make sure like you know uh, it is on the ground and as you can see when I reveal my full model I put my model also on a cylindrical helicopter platform um, but as you can clearly see it's kind of phenomenal with the project settings and the standard settings uh, when the model was brought in that I have literally everything already there um, and it looks already pretty beautiful but there is still a lot to do in terms of retracing and setting up the HDRI backdrop plate and I show you this here as well what I do next so the most important thing, the very, very important thing is, of course, using the post-process volume. So I type in here the post-process volume, drag and drop it on my canvas. And what's the next very important step is I want to unbound it. So you click unbound. And that basically means whatever you choose in your post-process volume, all the settings you have inside, uh, it's unbound, it's infinitive. It's not just, you know, within this specific cube. What you see here, it's basically everywhere, okay? So the most important step you want to do in order to activate ray tracing, the reflections and everything, you type in the post-process volume ray for ray tracing, and then you can see that the ray tracing settings for ambient occlusion, for the GI global illumination, for the reflections and the translucency, uh, pops up. So this is what we are going to do right now. So first of all, I activate the uh, retracing, of course, here. And uh, pixels is basically in, in the GI, maybe just uh, one pixel. I start at the beginning, so it goes, it's the fastest, okay. And in the reflections, I turn this also on as a standard, you have 0 0.6. And the shadows, this is very, very important here. I changed this to area shadows. You will not see this here just by using the HDRI backdrop because you don't have an actual physical light source in it. But once you add a light source, you will see a tremendous, a real big difference yeah, in the in the shadows because the area shadows give you give you really photorealistic and very nice um, shadows, which you would not achieve by having the hard shadows. Okay. And a very, very important point is, of course, then the translucency, so the glass material. Uh, I also check the roughness here. So that can be 0 0.6 as a standard value, or like 1, which is the full reflection glossiness, would be supported. Um, it's also performance-based, then you can choose whatever you like. And I also turn on the shadows here, area shadows. And my samples, I leave it to basically one so i go with the lowest one and you want to turn on refraction and now you literally have in the post process volume and in this entire scene file 
everything set up. So next step is you really want to check your frames per second to control like the impact of the samples because you might not even see it here right now. But I, I go to uh, go to the drop down arrow here and turn on show frames per second. It's also control shift and H. And when you do that, you can clearly see here with this current resolution, which mine is pretty big here, I have already uh, 40 frames per second. So everything is in real time. And the retracing, you see it here on the reflections is doing a a phenomenal job, I have to say so, uh, because everything is retraced and you can see that it's it's like it's really beautiful in real time. So one thing I want to show is because people say, Bernard, I can't even see any difference when I'm using the HDRI backdrop. How can I see the difference um, uh, using actually different samples? Uh, so if you increase, for instance, just try this, increase the samples for ray tracing in the GI to, let's say, 64. Now look at this. As soon as I did that, my frames dropped down to 10 frames per second. So I go back to 1 because I can't even see any difference here. And I want to keep it at the highest performance possible, right? Then the next thing you can make the same test, for instance, here by retracing with the reflections. And if you check samples per pixels and you go up and just type in 12, you see already the frames drop to 17, right? So I go back to one because I have a very perfect, uh, really supported reflections. So you can clearly see this is the basic setup using uh, the HDRI backdrop and in the next steps, I also show you how to exchange the backdrop and also how to change the resolution of your backdrop and uh, how to change also the quality of the backdrop you are using. So now let's have a closer look to the new HDRI backdrop. What can you do with it and how do you control it? How can you change the texture map and the dome and everything? So first of all, what you would like to understand is when you select the HDRI backdrop and you go to the wireframe mode, then you can clearly see that this is nothing else than a dome, right? So when you zoom out, then you can actually see that this is, so to speak, a spherical dome, kind of. Uh, and on this geometry, the HDRI is kind of like mapped. So that's basically it. You want to see this here. You, you should have, you should know what is actually going on with the HDRI backdrop, right? So what's important is when you can see that is uh, you can select it and then of course you can move it. Uh, it's like a geometry like anything else. But there are also some additional nice features. For instance, is here the so-called projection center. Right, And as you can see, if you drop this or, or bring it up, look at this, how beautiful that is, is I can change my projection center also in the height um, and influence the texture map so nicely if it's uh, a high res image, if it's, um, uh, if it's holding up at the resolution, that you actually could have this helicopter or this drone landing here and it totally fits into the shot and you have a 360 uh, degree shot, which is super, super cool. So you have immediately like something that really fits um, into this environment, right? And um, so once you placed the projection center in the height and from the left and from the right into the right direction, however, wherever you want to drop it, that's really up to you. Then you also can change the size so basically here you see right now the size in the units is basically in meters, 120 meters, which is fairly small. You can increase this. And by doing so, you also see that the horizon line was changing, right? And that's super cool. I mean, I have to say that uh, what Unreal did here in Epic, I mean, you guys rock. Uh, you get an, an triple A++ because this thing made me so happy it's just fantastic now look at this right so even if uh, i would hide this and my helicopter would be just here i could then basically have with an additional light source create a ground shadow 
and it looks like the helicopter is in this scene file here, right? Anyways, as you can see, it's beautiful, and this is what you can do with the HGI backdrop. Then, in terms of the quality, that's also major because, of course, first of all, you can double click. And let's talk about the HRI map. You can exchange this HRI map with free downloadable HRI maps. Just make sure that when you download an HRI, it's really an HRI. It has to be a high dynamic range image. That means that picture was taken with multiple exposure shots and then basically compiled from 8-bit images or even hopefully 16-bit images to 32-bit images. But what's super cool is, first of all, you can also see now the latest version supports even 8K pictures. That means you could crank this up to even a higher resolution. I usually say uh, in terms, you see it also here, maximum resolution in the gameplay that is supported is 2048, so 2K. Uh, and you can also see the texture map that is supported here is actually 4K, 4096 pixels by 2048. I think it's even a little bit bigger. But the crazy stuff is uh, that if you have a larger image, a super high resolution image for a DOM shot to cover the whole DOM uh, resolution or dome, so to say it right, then you can even pump this up to 8000 and whatever. I think it's 8049. Uh, as far as I know, and it's still supported and it works. If you would like to change the HDRI backdrop image, that's not a problem at all. As you can see, just download HDRI images, import it into one of your folders and then drag and drop it. And as you can see, it will be immediately adjusted. But make sure, for instance, that you really have high-res images if you want to see them in the in the background because as you can see it might be blurry uh, and not high enough in the re resolution you can also check the import settings uh, of your texture map or the hdri again by double clicking on it and then when you import them make sure usually in the level of details the texture map is set to from texture group and make sure it's set to no MIP maps. So if you change this, then it has a huge impact to the quality of the picture. And again, also here you see this texture map is actually a 4K texture map and you can change the quality uh, and the texture size here again with the maximum texture size. And if you change this to 2048, then you have a decent quality for any still shot in the panorama or whatever. And again, you could crank this up and you saw now here the change once it's loaded in the, uh, in, into the system. It's quite phenomenal. So if you go back here, then you can clearly see, look at this beautiful uh, texture map here. And it's really, really super, super cool, right? You can really see this quality. I mean, it's insane. And I was running tests with 8K maps, and I have to say, yeah, it's fantastic. So, but there is one more thing I wanted to show you, and, and even more things on top of it. Uh, and it's, for instance, here also the exposure. And the next step we are going to do is looking into cameras and how we change the exposure settings uh, on the fly. So exposure settings, as we can see, when you are moving your camera, right? And let's say I go really to the headlight here of my helicopter, but then whoop, I go back and I look into my sky dome, right? You can see that the exposure is changing. And this is because by default, the perspective view has already set up or is set up with an auto exposure, right? And if you have an auto exposure set up, uh, that's cool, I guess, for previews and everything, but I prefer to use a real physical camera to get depth of feel and control my exposure and everything by myself. So how is this going to happening and how can you do this? First of all, what I do is I bring in on the cinematics a uh, sign camera actor and I drop it onto my canvas. I hit the G button so I can also see what's going on with my camera here. And as you can see, I have immediately here a preview rendered from my sign camera actor. So I move my camera a little bit here to in front of my helicopter, whatever. So like this. 
And now I jump from the perspective view into my camera and you click on perspective, sign camera actor one, and boom, now you're literally looking through your camera. But even so, if you have to set up, it's still everything on auto exposure and the camera is basically set up the same way like if you know it from a real uh, camera you buy uh, you know at any at any shop and everything is set to the automatic mode so what i also like to do is of course like i like uh, to use then the cinematic viewport but i will show you this uh, immediately how to do this as well and how we change the post process volume to set up everything for a manual camera so first comes first uh, i go on the cinematics and i add a new level sequence and I basically call it um, ray tracing HDRI level 001. So here we go. And as you can see, the sequencer is kicking in. And once the sequencer is, is up and running, you have now the option to bring actors to the sequence. So what I usually do is if I go back into my perspective mode and hit the G button, then you can see here, this is my big movie camera, my sign camera actor. Looks actually really cool. Uh, and what I do is now I select my camera, sign camera actor one, I keep the standard names, drag and drop it to my sequencer here. And as you can see, this camera is now part of the sequencer. And by default also, there are 150 frames uh, set up and you can run them in animation. It's really super cool. You also see here uh, that the sequences icon is now on the set and it basically means, hey, boy, you have already one sequence up and running and uh, if you select it, you can also see this is the sequence called ray tracing HDR level 001, how we named it. So I saved the current. So once the camera, the sign camera actor was dropped, um, or assigned to the sequencer you can clearly see that you have here the current aperture and the focal length uh, you can manipulate so when you change the focal length you can clearly see this here in real time it's super cool uh, it's like a real camera and and how it should behave but watch this if i change the current aperture to let's say like 10 the exposure doesn't change or if i change it to 20 the exposure doesn't change, but it clearly should, right? So the reason why it's not changing is because everything is set right now to the, by default to, to the automation mode or to the automatic mode, and you want to change this. So how can you change this? You select the sign camera actor, and then on the details, in the details panel, first of all, you type in exposure. And when you do that, you can clearly see here uh, under the exposure tab, the metering mode is right now set to auto exposure. Click on it and change it to manual. Now, boom, if you do that, you see it's immediately underexposed. The reason why is because we didn't make all the settings. We didn't set all the, cor uh, the correct settings for that camera. So there is a quick uh, cheat, so to speak, right underneath. And <clears throat> it's a so-called exposure compensation. Um, if you bump this number up to 10 or like 50, you see it's completely overexposed. If I go down to one, it's underexposed. Five would probably nail it. But anyways, this is a quick cheat. Yeah, you can use it if you want to. Um, I usually prefer to set up my camera like a real physical camera. And I can also adjust then my ISO. So to do that is I type in ISO. And as you can see, by default, it started with an ISO of 100, and I probably need here an ISO from 5000, something like this. So and as you can see, right now, I have, so to speak, my camera set up with, um, you know, the right f-stop, and it's set now to manual. So let's, let's test it. If I change my f-stop now to 10, boom, you can clearly see, if I'm shooting now with an f-stop of 10, um, then you can see it's underexposed. So if I go back to one, that is a freaking nice open lens, right? Um, I have a beautiful, a beautiful depth of field here already, even if I'm shooting with the 50, 50 mil lens. So um, how can you control now the manual focus distance here in the sign camera actor? 
it's super cool look at this i can change the manual focus here and shift from the blade here in the very very front right and can shift my focus from the text this is actually my last name right for all of those beautiful people who don't know out there but anyways uh, you can change this and then you can change the the focal point that's really really cool also one more thing what i wanted to show you in terms of the bokeh effect i really really like that is the fact that you can change the so-called blade count for the iris and by default it's also set to seven and i usually like to change this to five so this actually gives you really really nice bokeh effects if you have glossy highlights uh, where it appears and it looks very very cool so the next very 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 important thing and you might have noticed this already is about the refraction uh, i didn't even mention it yet but as you can see somehow something is not working out with the refraction here especially with the um, you know focal point and the zoom and when you look clearly look at this it looks kind of like goofy right so something is off here so the question is how can you change and fix the refraction here because something is not working out and it's also in the camera settings so when you select your sign camera actor then type in uh, under the, the filter um, in the search details translucency or trans what i just type in for short and then you know you can clearly see that it tells you specify the type of the translucency and look at this if you have it by default it's usually raster but if you change this to ray tracing you see something is changing and then still because we said that the translucency is retraced we also want to make sure that the retracing translucency is refractive so we have refraction turned on and if you do that now you have the actual correct correct setup and you see that glass behaves like glass according to your iro uh, so to the index of refraction whatever you have specified in your glass shader but this is major this is huge right and this was also such a beautiful update in the latest release from epic uh that's why they were epic i mean honestly i love those guys because like even translucency if you do it right and everything is set up correct look at this glass is so beautiful in real time i mean this is like this is a dream okay so of course you can tweak it you can also set the max roughness and if you go down you can clearly see that at a specific point the translucency or the refraction is kind of like breaking but you know for performance um, in this particular case it's, it's a dream using an hdri backdrop uh, i can go with maximum roughness here uh, you have also maximum refraction rays so uh it's it's clearly to see if you just use one there isn't enough bounces in the support and you can see then after one bounce it's kind of like dark right and i even gave the shader some i say like um you know a diffuse color etc but even so it's looking great just for like um, uh, a refraction ray of one and you can clearly see now the big difference if i bump this up and give it a second ray right um that you can see what's going on even inside because there is a seat inside right and we can go inside it's like it's really really cool but i need to choose here or change also my lens so look at this if i go now with a super wide lens and now we go into this baby and now we sit inside look at that we can even see the the cockpit and uh i can change here now also my focal point and i mean this this is just like <laughs> i don't know how you want to call it but this is insanity right i really really love that so what's also important is if you have shadows then on inside you see then other things happening is of course you want to select instead of the hard shadows and also area shadows 
Uh, and you can also increase then the samples per pixel. If you want to have less noise, you bump it up, whatever. But I have to say, with the latest release, um, it's really great. I mean, what they did here is just amazing. I don't even want to see all the details from outside. I think this looks even more realistic. And so I keep the bounce, um, uh, basically the refraction rays at one right now. And it looks really, really beautiful. So this is also about, um, you know, translucency and reflections. And as you can see, it's amazing because uh, we have a full 360 degree shot. The resolution is set just to 2K and it looks beautiful. Now, uh, what else do we do? Uh, what else can we actually take? Uh, shaders, of course, materials, so to speak. As you can see with my current exposure, it's still like uh, daylight. Uh, the sun is slowly going down. But I also feel like that probably, I have to say, so probably my lights, they can use some glow or some like illumination because it might get a little bit darker. So let's do this. I select my light here. I kill here this, delete this, and seem like double click on my headlight shader. And then you can clearly see that I have here a multiply, um, a super simple shader actually set up. And I just want to increase the emissive light volume, right? And in order to do this is in the material editor, click one. And while you push the one button on your keyboard, click the left mouse button. And then you see basically here uh, a constant parameter. And this is set by default to zero. Now, if I want to crank up the emissive a lot, most of the time everybody tries to plug it in into the emissive color immediately. But no, uh, how you do it is with a multiplier, right? So you have a texture map, then the multiplier, and then you drag and drop it into the B slot. And now you can change the intensity. Let's pump this up maybe to 100, the value. And you see even the preview render, that's so awesome. Uh, how strong this light is going to be. I don't know. I just saved it and I click it, you know, and look, look. I mean, this, this is, this is hilarious. This is amazing. And now I have immediately in real time a glowing light as well. Um, and it's just, it just looks phenomenal. It's really awesome. Let's have a look on the backside because there are uh, one of those lights in it too. And of course we could even bump this up and make it um, even stronger, right? So whatever. This is basically the project settings, the render settings for uh, a product shot with an HDRI. It's super clean. It's very crisp. Um, and I was using this model shaded, uh, this model actually with V-Ray inside of 3ds Max. So I'm using V-Ray and Max since like, I don't know, 15, 20 years now. But anyways, this is how you do it, and it's fantastic. And you can use this, of course, for all kinds of product shots, uh, but also for exterior renders, whatever you have in mind, architecture, and of course, also for interior renders. And I will show you also the interior renders right after. And look at this. It's super cool. And uh, I have also now basically an emissive light in real time. Uh, you know, in the reflections and everywhere. So I save my current uh, project, save all and save everything. And the next thing I want to show you is a quick animation. How can you use the camera to run to render a product shot and, and make a quick animation with this? And I think it's super cool, right? And I show you how that can be done right now. So in order to do an animation in the sequence, and I love the sequencer, they did such an amazing job, you basically have to understand, uh, not a lot actually, that's the cool thing, you just have to understand that you have your camera as an actor in the sequencer. And you have some primitive forms here, like parameters, like in the transform node, what you want to set keys and animate. And I'll show you here with the 150 frames how quick and easy we can do this. So. First of all, in the settings, what I change is whenever I make any changes, I select all those keys. Uh, that means I always want to key everything as soon as I basically make a change. That's, so to speak, an auto key, right? 
so first what I do is I set my first key at frame 0 and then I can go to frame 150 and I just move my camera whatever that move is uh, you can be now the director and you can do whatever you like to do so oops I was just uh, selecting something else so I pull my camera or move my camera over here maybe that something like this who knows how this looks like but anyways look at this move I have it already and by default like any other editor usually you have ease in and ease out sometimes it's good to have this but sometimes you don't want to use it and I show you also how to change to the graph editor by clicking on this and then you basically see here you switch to the graph editor that is also new and you know uh, it's a major change that was actually done also in the latest update but it's very simple so you select your camera uh, component or sign camera actor and then you see that everything has curves like ease in and ease out so all I do is you select them and then you make them linear right so if you um, can you can also clearly see here like you have location you have rotation right you have scale uh, and so on but what I did for instance here in the location I set everything to linear then you close it and as you can see now I don't have ease in and ease out I have a constant linear animation of my camera and that is really really super cool it's it goes like you know so easy and so fast and in real time uh, it's just like that any offline render and when I look back doing a camera work and animation work like in other 3d applications I will never ever go back because you know just doing a previous in real time everything fully shaded and lit it's just like it's it's a blast especially as a director and if you want to tell a story and if you want to shoot something and uh, make some product shots or whatever this is how you do it right so now uh, what we can see here is also just like a preview in the editor but uh, I show you also how to render out the frames for an animation right so first of all by default you have 30 frames per second set you can also use just 24 frames or 60 frames per second whatever you like to render and you know produce but that's how you do it and the beautiful thing is also that you don't need a render farm anymore yes thank you so much Nvidia thank you so much <laughs> real at this point I love you guys uh, that gives um, small studio owners like me also the power to really you know do artwork so much quicker and faster and you know you don't rely anymore on those crazy render farms and machines and like having this crazy network uh, which, which is really really super cool so let me see what else I would like to animate so let's say at the beginning I would like to animate my focus distance and let's say I start out of the focus look at this it's so cool right I mean you get even your depth of field bulky effects that's so cool and then let's say at frame 60 I set my manual focus and I go in here and set the focal point to the beginning and that's it now let's see the animation look at this right and if I don't like it if it's too fast I can even add some frames and I see it in real time and I see exactly how that move was done and how it, how it looks like I mean this is just epic that's why the guys at the epic are really epic I love them it's unbelievable I have so much fun uh, I can't even tell you guys because now it's so much about being an artist uh, it's less technical it's yeah I mean there is still a lot of technical knowledge uh, let's face it but um, on the flip side I have to say you can also get rid of a lot of other stuff um, and post process I mean compositing tools or whatever and you can do it in real time I mean it's so intuitive it's so great uh, I, I'm just like a big I mean now I'm really addicted to Unreal because like it's the best ever so anyways as you can see this is how you do quick animations and um, last but not least I also want to show you how to render this animation right 
how to do an animation like this um, for like um, other video editing if you want to use it for other compositing software tools or whatever. So you see it here, render this movie to a video or an image frame sequence. You click on it and as you can see, I changed this to, let's do just JPEGs. Um, I have no audio, 30 frames per second is fine. And my final output, I want to do it, let's say, full HD, so 1920 by 1080. I have no burn-in options. And uh, what else in my render settings, in the output settings, I would like to specify, of course, where I would like to save it. And on the Fade Bowl, I save it under my, where do I have my... Uh, Unreal projects. So, and then I have somewhere here my ray tracing HDRI. So, here we go. And then I do here my render output. So, render output folder. So, I specify this folder. And then I have compression quality at 100 and I always overwrite existing ones. And in this case, that's it, you know, in the animation or whatever. I don't even need to specify anything here. You could see like start from frame zero and stop at frame 150. You can also have warm up frame counts and delay before and after if you have many, many lights going on. But in this case, nope, I don't. Now watch this capture movie in real time. Uh, save selected, everything has to be saved before. And now what you see is basically a real-time render, an image sequence, it's capturing it, and boom, done. You know, this was my animation. So this whole animation with depth of field, motion blur, everything activated, fully retraced, took me what, like four seconds, right? Something like this. So what I can do now, uh, so what I can do now is uh, image viewer and assure it is also live and I bring in those frames. So I was saving this under Unreal Projects and then we have ray tracing, HDRI, render output. So and all I do is like drag and drop it and then watch this in full HD here. And uh, now you can see the entire animation is done, like uh, ran it out. And I played also while it's still retracing in the background, but this was an animation done in uh, full HD, uh, HDRI shot, retraced, everything you should need to know to get started. Uh, and if you like this animation, if you like this tutorial, and if you have any other questions, then feel free to send me your questions, make some comments, uh, let me know what questions you have, how I can help you. And very, very important, of course, I love to help you with any problems you have. If you have any projects, you would like to have an animation, product shots or anything, just send me a text message um, and let me know. I will respond to you. I will help you no matter what it is. If you're um, in retail design, exhibit design, product design, interior design, if you're an architect, if you're a business developer, if you're a marketing guy who needs uh, footage and, and, and uh, content marketing, so to speak, and pictures, for whatever it is, just, uh, you know, don't be shy and let me know what you're doing and what questions you have. I will answer all your questions. I'm more than happy to help you as well. That being said, also please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel if you think this was helpful because I will release uh, more and more video uh, tutorials and I'm also giving good is a way. And as always, this as well, uh, you can download the scene file from the entire project file from fedible.com on my resource page. But keep in mind what I cannot, but please keep in mind what I cannot do. Unfortunately, is I cannot give you the model, but the project scene file has the full setup. Uh, it includes, of course, also the free HDRIs. It's fully set up and ready to go. And I also uh, drop in the shaders and materials for you on spheres so you can reassign them and use them. 
uh, for your own objects and geometry, whatever you use. Uh, that being said, I hope this was helpful. I wish you all the best. And now I have to do a really cool animation with this whole uh, copter here, right? <laughs> all right. See you later, guys. Have a good one. Happy rendering and talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.